tired. I had a pretty decent flight. Let me open this. And I just got to my room. I was a little skeptical because coming out from the airport, the airport was super small. The arrival to the airport, definitely a rundown area. So I was kind of nervous um, just because I've never been here. But the more I got closer to the hotel, the nicer it got. And it feels like a little ski resort in Colorado. I'm actually really, really liking it. It was only about a 10, 12 minute drive. Uber was super easy to get. Like I said, super tiny airport. So I don't know what Lima is like if you guys are ever flying into Lima, but I'm at the Selena Plaza de Almas and they had two locations, but this one seemed to have like a better common areas and everything. So I decided to stay at this one and they have different options. So if you guys watched my Rio de Janeiro vlog, I was in a suite, which was just a beautiful room. They didn't have any suites available, so I'm in the standard room, which I want to show you guys because it is still really nice. So out here is just the yoga studio, which is kind of cool, and then the kitchen's back there. Here's my room. It's kind of a mess because I just threw my suitcases down. My bed that I will be sleeping in, a little mirror here, a TV a desk, some, I guess, I don't know if it's Incan artwork or Mayan, someone correct me, cause I don't know, I'll figure out eventually. And then my suitcases, it's a lot chillier in here than I thought it would be. So I'm gonna be putting all the warm clothes over there, shutting that suitcase and then taking all my colder stuff out. There's an extra blanket, closet to hang stuff up. And then here is the bathroom. Not a ton of counter space, but again, I got the standard room. It's probably for people who don't even bring two suitcases. And then I've got a shower, which is kind of unique because it's like a step in. There's a little divot there, but still, I mean, it's a good sized bathroom. Like I am not complaining at all. There's plenty of room in here. This is certainly bigger than some hotel rooms, like just in general, not even just here. And I need to check out the outlets. Oh my God. Oh my God, no, no. Will this really take an American cord? I'm gonna have to try this. I'm gonna try this because if this takes US plugs, I am gonna be so thrilled because my converter sucks. We're gonna test it out. Let's see, let's see. Will you fit? Oh my God, this is such a life. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You guys, Peru takes US outlets. Woo, this is, I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but this is just flipping awesome because my converter sucked. Like I would plug it in and it would just come and fall out. It like didn't, I don't know if it was worn out. It was crappy little converter. This will convert anything and everything. You stick it in on this side and then the back side, this will flip out for Europe like so. And then so this is works for Chili. It's like our outlet plugs, but it has more of an angle. And then there's the European three prong. I'm sure they have them on Amazon. They sell them at the airports, but obviously they're gonna charge you a pretty penny at the airport. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just really excited. I saw an alpaca on the street coming here. I actually saw two, so they look better in person and I asked the chick, I just like, are these alpacas animals or are they just for tourism? And she's like, well, they own them, but they're kind of just for people to take pictures. So if it doesn't get too dark, I'm tempted to just like stand out there and try to get a photo with one of them. Not that I look that great, but I just really want to touch one. Like they're just so cute. Um, Anyway, really happy with this Selena location. My one in Rio, I was kind of disappointed in. While it looked really nice, it just was not a great area of town. Um, I booked a tour for tomorrow, so I'll wait to tell you guys what I'm doing there. It starts at 7.30 in the morning. I didn't want to do one that was first thing in the morning, and that's not first thing in the morning for me. Um, planning to FaceTime. My boyfriend later on and figure out food. I don't know what apps work here yet. So 
yeah, and then just kind of take it easy for tonight. So I will catch you guys if I encounter an alpaca. Otherwise, I'll see you in the morning tomorrow. Bye. belong to the uh, family of the camels. Mm? And now, uh, in, the, in this place, we have just llamas. We will continue to the other side, and we want to see other species of llamas, alpacas, and on the other side, the bequinas and guanacos. Mm? So we have two species of llamas, llama chaco and llama cara. Which is the difference? The llama chaco has more wool, more, more fiber than llama chaco. Mm? Now, 10 thousand years ago, llamas and alpacas were, were domesticated in the Andes. Yeah, but they don't have gas. But they don't have trees or bushes to make part of the food. So in that case, the people use the food. All right, who wants the grass? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oops. I wish you like it though. We have the alpacas. Oh, alpacas. Oh. And we can see much more you the guys. difference. No? The alpacas are more shorter than llamas, but has a better quality of fiber. So there are two species of alpacas. Alpaca wakaya. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can't write. Usually, the and this is really important. As well, the llamas can carry no more of 25 kilos. Mm. I choose the three. And this always no high speed walking on the path in the train. A parasite named cochinilla that lives on the cactus. How do people get? Oh wow. Mm -hmm. And now what happened is I use a little bit of lemon. Oh, oh wow. it's possible. Get another chance of red colors. Mm -hmm. As well the women use like lipstick mm -hmm. in different Peruvian communities when they celebrate festivals or paint the face as well. Yeah yes the knowledge they did to preserve it mm -hmm. uh, is thanks to or ancestors that could resist during the colonial time. They made in the mountains. Why the mountains and not underground? The mountains from ancestors uh, was for were associated with the mother earth. And why it did the position? Because according to the Incas world view, they thought that they came back to the mother earth. And for that reason, in fetal position. As well in the tomb, they introduced different ceremonial objects that they made with gold, with silver, clay, the woods, they into different ceremonial objects as well the coca leaves. Hmm? The coca leaves were really important during the Inca sign. Hmm? In the moment we're gonna see the white. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the community hands. My name is Diana, and I'm going to teach you a little bit how you can recognize when something is real, baby alpaca garment or not. Because not all the garments that you are going to find around the major square or outside of your hotel 
are originals like this. This garment, for example, is 100% synthetic acrylic plus made in China. But the people try to offer like a pack. Normally, this garment inside is rough, but outside sometimes feels soft because they brush it with a metallic brush to get a part of the softness. After one wear, it gets peeled. Very bad color. You can touch and feel. This garment feels spongy, feels dry, and feels very light. This is the fake one? Fake. Now you are going to compare with this other one that looks better and feels better too. Why? Because it's better quality. 100% alpaca or regular alpaca. <coughs> regular alpaca means second, third shaving of the animal. That's why it feels a little soft and a little cold. But now you are going to compare with this. That is the real baby alpaca garment. Baby alpaca means the first shaving of the animal. That's why it feels very soft and colder than the other one. Why? Because it has a natural grease that the name is lanolin. The lanolin keeps the temperature of your body. If you live in a hot place, it will be fresh. If you live in a cold place, it will be warm. To wash this kind yeah. of garments, you have to hand wash cold water with a regular hair shampoo or just yeah. dry clean. Right. Finally, that's hot. Let me show you the most softness and expensive fiber in the world. Whoa. This is the famous Vicuña one. This is considered as the goal of the Andes. That's why he has to touch it high dollars. The Vicuña is a wild animal that nowadays is protected by the government. That's why we don't kill this animal. We just rescue this skin when they die for natural consequences. Here we have permission for the government, that's why we sell some garments in the So they gave a really great demonstration of the different types of alpaca furs. Why won't you focus on me? Um, and unfortunately the one I like the best is the boleca, I think. It is unfortunately the most expensive one. And while they have a lot of different things to buy at the shop, I mean they have a ton, a ton, a ton. A lot of it's not as decorative as the stuff in the city unfortunately so I don't like it as much but the stuff I do like is this botaka fur and what I really really like is this coat and I asked how much it was because they said this is like the most expensive because they can only shave it after the animal has died meaning that it makes it very very rare and I really liked this coat because it was so soft. She said it was $8,000. I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. So then I asked how much is this bomber jacket. And she said $6,000. So I was like, okay, that's definitely not going to work. And then um, I asked how much these blankets were. And they're like $2,000, even though they're baby alpaca. So the top tier one is the, what did I say? Albeca fur. I don't know, I'll have to write this down for you guys because I don't even remember how to pronounce it. And then it's the baby alpaca and the baby alpaca fur means it's the first shave of the alpaca, meaning it's higher quality. And it is definitely the softest thing ever, but I don't have room in my suitcase and I don't have thousands of dollars to spend on this stuff. But now I know what to look for if I'm looking for quality alpaca stuff, especially when I go back to the central market in Cusco's because in Cusco because there is definitely a difference between the way this stuff feels and the way the stuff feels in the market. Just saying. But you obviously gotta pay for that. Now why the Peruvian people 500 years ago decide to build up these terraces and why not like the local people nowadays in the valley, you know, using just a flat area. It tastes much better than chicken, no? Yes. So you, we usually prefer a, yes, in that case, we eat guinea pigs. It's very special for us. And now to this place, the local people from Cusco come here no, to eat. So the language of my ancestors 500 years ago was Quechua. Hmm? So the Inca scheme that got institutionalized the Quechua language, like the masterpiece, like Machu Picchu and Taitama and others uh, building, 
he had a nice relationship with every scientist 500 years ago because, for example, about the architecture style changed uh, in 1400, led by Pachacuti. They didn't use much mortar uh, to join the stones, they used the Lego technique or the concave and convex technique to join the stones, not without uh, much mortar. I've made it to the city of Machu Picchu, which has an official name, but I can't pronounce it. Anyway, it is really something else. It's right on this river. It's beautiful. It's in the middle of the mountains. I got up at 4 a.m. Well, nope, that's a lie. I got up at I got up at 3:30, and then I got picked up at 4, and then around. 4.15, I had to take a bus with other people to a train station. The bus was about two hours. And then once I got there, I was in this little pit stop with other tourists and got some coffee and almost missed my train because I didn't hear the announcement, I guess. Um, so I ran to the train station, luckily made it. And then the train was about two hours to here. And I met with my guide, he was a little hard to find, cool guy, he lives here, he's from Cusco. And he's just like, well, due to the time you arrived, we're gonna have to take the next one at 10 a.m. And I'm like, okay, that's in two hours. I got here a little after eight, and I just signed my name into something and then signed it into something else to get my ticket. Luckily it was all covered because this was a very expensive excursion in my mind. So there's another train coming in. Um, and he's just like, yeah, peace out. I'll see you in an hour. So I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. Like nothing's open. I found a spot to get a Coke. And for some reason, I do feel like this is really upsetting my stomach. I think the ceviche is too, but I've had major stomach problems. So just be aware when you come uh, to South America that your stomach could easily get upset by whatever it is you're eating. Anyways, side note. And so I'm just chilling here. I might have to buy an extra battery because my phone's already kind of dead. Not that I've been like heavily using it. Uh, so guys, bring chargers. I brought, a, I brought a cord, but I didn't bring a plug-in and I'm not finding anywhere that has just the USB plug-ins. I thought the train would, it doesn't, FYI. I thought the bus would, it also doesn't, FYI. So just know that ahead of time come fully charged and or bring a uh, added battery. I was gonna go to a restaurant and see if they had something, but I'm guessing they only have a plug-in. So since I've got an hour to kill, I might buy one of those too, depending on how expensive they are. Uh, but then after that, we've got a 30 minute train to actual Machu Picchu. And I don't think the hike is too long from what I've learned. I'm not really in the hiking mood right now. After Rainbow Mountain, the hiking kind of killed it for me. Well, I'm just going to try to be one with nature here. This cool statue here, I don't know what it depicts, but it's pretty cool. I think it's a baptism. It looks like a baptism to me. 
Now I'm alone for this. I thought I was gonna be in a group of people, but it's just gonna be me, so this probably is gonna be a little awkward, but the guy seems kinda cool. Seems like he does this all the time. Doesn't mind ditching me, obviously, which is fine. I don't know what I would do with him for an hour anyway. And uh, should be about a two hour tour, so I will see you guys at Machu Picchu. Putukusi Mountain, the happy mountain. Happy mountain? Yes. <laughs> Why? What does it mean the happy mountain? Why is it called that? It's because you don't see the tourists. It's not like much pitch. It's not too busy. <laughs> That's why the local people they put the name of that mountain. <laughs> So it started the original yes, trail. Yes, yes, that's the last part. Oh of the yeah, trail. I see it. And this other, this, the famous sand gate. When the people they make before the Inca trail, yeah, they come from that mountain. So they take the first view of the Machu Picchu for the sand gate. So did they come from the other side, or did it yes, start at top? Yes. So it started low and yes, came it's, over. It's like up and down. That's crazy. So the highest point of the Inca trail is like four thousand. 200 meters about slow. How it's often like, did they hike it? How oh. often would they walk the trail? Was it like every day they walked it? Yes, every day. Wow. For example, uh, only 500 people they went every day that trail. So wow. every day they start in the, the Inca trail. Actually, it's in good condition, yes. really. Yeah. So they could come from like over there. Yes. And they just walk over here. Yes. That is crazy. They must be, are they very strong animals then? Yeah, for example, in Quechua Sam, the llamas they use like like horses for trunk. Wow, yes. but alpacas can't carry as no. much. Yeah, I do know that. <laughs> They're so cool. They're just living life up here. Yeah. Enjoying it. They just eat the grass? Yes. And did the Incas live anywhere outside of Peru or were they just in Peru? In Peru. As well, in the another, after I want to show you, for example, the Inca Empire is passed for six countries in South America. Okay. So from Cusco is going part of Argentina, Chile, Bolivia. Gotcha. As well. What an experience. When people said Machu Picchu was magical, I did not believe them at all. It is a beautiful, beautiful spot. I had a really great tour guide through TripAdvisor. His name was Moro, I think. Um, really great guy. I wrote a review on TripAdvisor because he deserved it. And I was really nervous because I was having to do the trip solo because no one else signed up, which was actually fine because he was so cool with it. I woke up at 3.30 to get picked up at four. And then I had to go to a bus station where the bus took off at like 4.15. And this was with other people, so I wasn't alone the entire time, which was nice. But then I took a bus, which was about an hour, 45 minutes, to a train station with Machi, I think it's just called Machi Picchu Train, is the company. The only company really you should be using. I don't think there's any other trains. That's literally the main one. They do a great job. So then I waited about half an hour and I boarded a train, which was about two and a half hours to Machu Picchu town. Once I got to Machu Picchu town, I met up with my guide and then he was like, well, we got another bus to take in an hour. So I roamed around the town, which is very beautiful by the way. Super cool, reminded me of Colorado and boarded this shuttle bus up the mountain to Machu Picchu, which was about half an hour, not too bad. And then we got there and had to wait maybe like 10 minutes to then take a 20 minute or so hike up to Machu Picchu. And so yeah, not much hiking involved. It is just a very, very, very timely thing. You cannot just drive there in 15 minutes and poof, be there but it truly is worth it if you're willing to spend the time even if you're not i think you should go because it's one of the great wonders of the world and get yourself a good guide like this guy i had he was really great uh 
There's a lot within Machu Picchu than just seeing the basic mountain. There's all these Inca remains and I learned so, so much from my guide. I won't spoil it all for you, but I will say that the most funny thing I learned is Machu Picchu, everybody says it wrong. And I don't say it right, and I've tried with several people to say it correctly, but Machu Picchu, you're supposed to say it like Pikachu, and trust me, they tell me I'm saying it wrong and then I try to say it right and I do not know the difference. But everybody who says Machu Picchu, you're basically referring to a woman's genital, genital area. So we're all saying it wrong and they think it's funny. They know that everybody says it wrong. It's a common mistake. Um, so fun fact there. The whole thing was based on being in a city away from a city that nobody could really find them they were trying to hide from the spaniards and the spaniards never did find them the kings would go up there it was a very sacred holy place and if you go you can learn all the little details and the symbols surrounding the city but it was a place for agriculture and for holy rituals whatnot and the whole thing was built because there was a water source on one of the mountains so they were able to build the civilization because the water would stream all the way through the mountain totally worth it though i know it's an expensive excursion but you guys will not regret it if you guys see my photos on my socials i think you can understand or get a glimpse about just how special this place is Yes. Chocolate con queso. Maiz caliente. How many do you guys have? How many alpacas do you have? What's that one's name? It's Juanita. So Juanita. I wanted to wrap this video up with my quick and final thoughts on Peru. I 100% think you guys should visit Peru. While I didn't get to Lima, I recommend you guys check that out because that does give more of a city atmosphere as it is the main city in Peru. However, I would not recommend skipping over Cusco. Cusco is a magical place. Reminds me of being in a Hallmark movie or a snow globe. The people are very, very nice. Obviously, there's some things to watch out for. Just know that when you're walking the streets, people will kind of hassle you to go to different restaurants, specifically in the main square. Um, and they do like tips. I would recommend as well you guys do not leave Cusco without taking some selfies with the alpacas they're beautiful these people can be a little nagging as well with how much to pay them um don't feel like you have to pay them that much at all they will probably frown at you if they're not getting a hundred percent of what they ask for but also just give them what you want these people are very hard working this is a source of income for them if not the main source um machu picchu 100 percent need to go to that although we'll have to check back with this video because i did realize after i left it actually closed down which is really sad um, again, just a very magical place. Know that it's going to take you all day to get there. It's a series of train rides and buses and transportation that can be kind of messy, so please book that through something like TripAdvisor like I did. There's obviously some other things like Rainbow Mountains, a few lakes you guys can go to, but those would be my top two recommendations, and then just touring the city and seeing what kind of culture they have. I wouldn't recommend just going out on your own throughout Peru because people are not very good at speaking English and there are many many poor areas of the country. I have heard that Lima in itself can be rather dangerous so if you guys are going there just make sure your street smarts are up to speed, have basic sense about those things. But overall I thought Cusco was one of the most special sacred places um, that I visited in all of South America, so would 100% recommend you guys go there if you haven't already. 
Give yourself a week. You want to be able to take everything in. You don't want to go and then feel like you miss out on things and have to go back. Uh, but comment if you guys have been to Cusco or other areas of Peru. If you've done any of the excursions I've done and just any other thoughts you have or questions that you may want to get answered and I will try my best to answer them. Hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!